What's going on, guys? It is Bernardo, and today is all about recovering your domain controller using Windows Server Backup. So let's get right into it. Yes, so today is all about recovering your domain controller. I think on the last video, we went over backing it up. We backed it up successfully, and today is all about recovering. Now, while I'm talking, you guys should see everything going, you know, in action. I just created a another virtual machine called new DC, created a folder. Uh, I mounted the ISO. I booted into that ISO. I picked, I think, a Windows recovery option. It loaded up and I gave it the, the network path of where the restore image is located. I selected my image. Uh, it started recovering. I was actually able to successfully recover my domain controller with no problem using the, the method that I did on the last video with you guys, which was pretty awesome. Now, everything was successful and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut the B-roll right there and I'm gonna show you guys what I did afterwards because once you recover a domain controller you got, it, you, you actually have to go in there and run a couple of tests to make sure everything is nice and healthy. So on my domain controller, which is right here, this is the recovered uh, domain controller that I just did, which you just saw briefly. Uh, DC01 was recovered successfully, which was awesome. And the first thing that I like to do is run a bunch of PowerShell commands to make sure that everything is healthy. So I open up PowerShell ISE as a full administrator. And I basically have this PowerShell script to check if all services are up and running. Now, some of the services that you should check once a domain controller is recovered is your DNS, your DFS replication, intersite messaging, Keybrose keyed, uh, your net login, and your active directory domain services. You got to make sure that all those services are up and running. So I have a PowerShell script that basically checks all that. When I run it, it gives me a nice little list right here below uh, that everything is running. Now, by any chance, if those services are not running automatically, you got to check your event logs and check why it's not running. Okay. You might have to go into services and, you know, start it up manually or do a reboot or just check the event logs to make sure those services are healthy. Now, I have another PowerShell script. And this PowerShell script has a bunch of commands that I like to run depending on your environment. Now, the first command, which is right here, uh, because I already have one domain controller within my environment, I, I don't have replication. I think later on, I'm going to add an additional domain controller and do the backup scenario so I can run this. That's going to be a later on video. But for this environment, I actually run the DNS one. Now, I did get some failures with the DNS tests because I'm actually using Google's DNS. <laughs> so within the logs, you see a lot of 8.8.8 .8 errors because I don't own that DNS server. But the first thing you need to do is just run DNS. Make sure that you don't have any issues with DNS lookup. Your DNS is nice and healthy. Now, the next command that I like to run is basically the diagnostics. This is right here. Uh, it just runs all the tests and make sure it is nice and healthy. If you have any issues, look into the output of it and then fix those issues. Now, the last command that I like to run is the following. Uh, again, even though the first command that I show you guys, which was this one right here, runs all the tests and actually produces errors, this right here will only produce errors. So it, it kind of like dumbs it down to only errors, even though a lot of stuff passed, but you want to see what the errors are so you can focus. Like I said before, I had a lot of issues with that 8.8.8.8 because I don't own that DNS server. I'm just using it, but I had a lot of issues communicating with that. You know, that's not really a big problem, but these are the commands that you should be running to make sure that your domain controller was fully recovered successfully and it is working properly within your environment. And I'm going to cut it right here and I'm going to continue the process of recovering my domain controller right now. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.